Hi, I'm Dr. Adeline Tan from University Malaysia Sabah. Today, I'm going to explain one topic under marketing. This top marketing unit is uh, Unit 5 under the course Fundamentals of Entrepreneurial Acculturation, APK. Let's look at the, my PowerPoint slide now. This marketing unit is very suitable to use for business doing either online or offline. For this Unit 5 marketing, you are going to learn how to do marketing, the fundamentals of marketing, understand the application of KLT and CVO. KLT is uh, no, no light and trust. CVO is about consumer value in marketing and understand the use of content in marketing. In this first video, I'm going to explain a little bit about marketing and fundamentals of marketing first. So marketing actually is a process of giving information to influence the consumer thoughts and action of a product or service. In another word, we hope that first they will get to know our product, they get to know our brand name, they get to uh, like our product hopefully. And then after that, we hope that they will start to buy our product. We will strengthen our branding, branding, strengthen our brand name by uh, make it more well known among the consumers. And a consumer will have a more positive thought. That means they will like our product. They will uh, want to buy our product. All these are the strengthening of uh, our brand name. And at the end, we also hope that it will increase ourselves and as well as the profit of the company. So this is the purpose of marketing. But at the same time, before we do marketing, before we go for marketing strategy, we have to know how to do a simple analysis of the internal and external environment. This analysis, we call it SWOT analysis. So SWOT analysis stands for the word strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, SWOT analysis. So, uh, this SWOT analysis is to analyze an organization's internal environment, that is the strengths and weaknesses of the organization, as well as the external environment, that are the opportunities and threats to create the foundation of a good, effective marketing strategy. So the, it is very important to address the weaknesses and improve the, the company as well as we make use of the strength of the company to take the opportunity that is available in the market. So strength, we are looking at our internal strength. What are we good at? What can we exploit and use to improve our business? What are the weaknesses of the company? What are the weaknesses that, what are our limitations that we have to reduce or eliminate? And at the same time, we look at what are the opportunities in the market that we can make use of and what are the threats that means what are the uh, factors that will affect the present and future of our company that we must try to avoid or we have to find a ways to reduce the threats so this is what we call short analysis all right this slide will show you the examples in terms of strengths the the strength may be in terms of the product all the services in terms of whether they have enough money, capital. In Malay, we call it modal perniagaan. Whether we have enough capital to do business, whether we have manpower to do business, whether we have knowledge and skills to do business. If we have enough capital, if we have knowledge and skills, these are the strengths that we can use to improve our business. But at the same time, every company we have their own weaknesses, the limitations. So we have to be very careful with this and try to solve the problem. For example, we have some disadvantages of our product, how some limitation we have to try to solve it. We have less capital, so we have to look for ways to increase the capital of the company. We might be inexperienced, but we have to try to look for people who have experience to give us information to teach us how to do, to give us a consultation and so on. And at the same time, we look at what are the opportunities outside. There are plenty of opportunities, but we have to know which opportunity is suitable for our company, right? So we, we need to find that. Sometimes the opportunity might be in terms of positive perception of a consumer towards this our product. 
For example, consumers now prefer natural product just because they are more concerned with the health. So now they are preferring natural product. So if your product have this con uh, concept, then it will be opportunity for your product. And at the same time, whether this product can convert into the new market. For example, we can see that Grab platform provided uh, servicing in terms of private transportation, but at the same time, they try to expand their business. Now they have a food delivery, and in future, they, they might also have the a loss of uh, delivery of goods and other services. So we can see that they are going to extend into other business using the same platform. While threats, we refer to many threats that we face in the market. One of the major threats that every company might be facing is competitor. We are facing competitors. We cannot avoid that, but we can reduce the risk of the competitors. That means that we make our product unique and uh, differentiate our product from the product of our competitors. So that is the way that allow us to be better, allow us to find a way to solve the problems of competition. Next, we are looking at the pro analysis of the product or service. From the, pre in the previous units, we already talked about the ideas, okay? We need to find out new marketing ideas. So I also mentioned about market segmentation in which we need to segment or categorize the consumers into different groups. And then we might only choose a certain group to do our business because uh, most of your company, if your company is small, then you have to focus on a small segment to do better than rather than focus on everybody to, to serve everyone. So when we after we segment the customers, then we need to satisfy the needs of the customer, make sure the customers are more happy with our product or our services. And at the same time, we need to validate the product and services, whether this is suitable for the customers or not. Sometimes our product is so good, but we have a problem that the product is a bit too expensive. So we have to make sure that the product is also affordable. I will not say cheap because cheap sometimes means that the quality is a bit low, but affordable and consumer are willing, willing to pay for that products or services. And after that, then we decide the marketing mix. The marketing mix are the traditional four P's or what we call seven P's today. And we tell the customers what are the, uh, what are the products that we are offering and then we are using marketing mix to help us to sell our products and our service to the customers. And always bear in mind, we keep on talking about product and services. Products and services must have some characteristic of either solving the customer's problem, solve the problems of the customers, or second, to add values to the product or services that we are offering. Okay, or add value to the customers that customers are happy with the product or service that we are offering. So when we look at market segmentations, like I explained last week, market segmentation can be divided based on different factors. One of the first factor is demography. That means we look at either in terms of age, gender, to decide who could be our customers. Let's say I'm selling T-shirt. If I'm selling T-shirt, then my customer can be anybody. So if I'm more focusing on T-shirt for young ladies, then the age group might be teenagers and young adults, and the gender might, might be ladies. These are the people I focus on. And based on this, I know their preference. What do they like? Uh, we, I know what color they prefer. So I will design my T-shirt according to their wants and needs. And then I make sure the product I going to sell is affordable for them. Then the second factor to segment the market is based on social economy. That means either uh, social factors such as uh, education, preference, lifestyle, or based on their income level, whether they have a high income, middle income, or low income level. So if they have high income, then we are targeting on higher price 
better quality product that they might like. But if we are looking at middle income, then we must know what type of product they prefer. And at the same time, another way we can do it is geographical. Let's say during this CMCO, you can't go very far, you cannot across the border of the district. So you can sell only in your own neighborhood, okay, your kampong kampong only. So in this case, you have you can use geographical as a way to segment your market. You just segment them within this area, okay, this neighborhood this kampong only, this city only. So based on that, we can decide what products are most suitable or what services they will prefer in this neighborhood. Next will be psycho psychology. Psychology in terms of values and other lifestyle factors. Okay, why we might need to do segmentation? This is because we would like to reduce the cost of marketing. We call it commercial cost, cost of marketing to, to reach the customers. If we want to target certain group of consumers, let's say we, I want to target at young adults, then I can use a social media such as Instagram and Facebook. These two groups, these two platforms is much easier to reach out to young adults. But if I want to reach out elder adults for a product that they might like, then if I use Facebook, many of them might not have Facebook, so it is not effective. So the importance of marketing segmentation is to help us help us to decide what marketing mix we need to use to reach the suitable right targeted market. Next, we are going to look at the marketing mix. Like I mentioned just now, we have traditionally four P's. The first P is product, which we look at the branding, the packaging, the quality of the product, the unit selling point, the value of the product, and so on. This is what we call product. Okay? And in terms of product, uh, branding is so, so important. The packaging also very important for the market today. And at the same time, people are looking at price. They want to know the, the price of the product for customer. This is the cost that they need to pay. So we have to ensure that the price is suitable, affordable for them. I always say affordable because if the product we set very cheap, people might have a negative, negative perception towards the product that is cheap. So it's very important we set a price that is uh, affordable that Customers is willing to pay for that product and they don't feel that the product is too cheap and um, of a bad quality. So at the same time, we have to think of uh, what discount we want them to, to give them to, to, to seek for royal custom, for royal custom, royal customer, what discount we want to give them and so on. And also in terms of price, we think of the payment options. How are they going to pay us? And then what are the value added service that we have to add in in the price? And then in terms of promotion, we have to think of what are the online and offline platform or channels for promotion, first thing. And then we have to plan for strategy. How are we going to do the promotion, included the schedule and so on. Next will be the budget. In another word, we ask ourselves, how much I need to pay for this promotion? And next, when we talk about the price, we look at the distribution channel. That means how the product fr from the supplier reach the hand of the customers. So this is very important. How the product reach the hand of the customer? Is it through uh, direct delivery? Or you are going to send by post? Or you are getting service from other people, right? Runner to help you to deliver the products? All these are the things that you have to consider. You might have many different channels. You might also get a middleman agent to help you to deliver if your business is so good. Okay, you need a middleman. So you employ somebody or you appoint somebody to be your middleman to deliver the products, to help you to sell the product. And then how about the placement, whether where you're going to sell the products, are you going to display it in certain place? Or you or are you going to display it your sam show your sample only in the Facebook? This is so important also, right? And next we look at the physical evidence. For example, we look at um how 
what are the evidence to prove that this product is very important or very good to use for for certain purposes so what we can do is we get testimonial for the customer this is one method second method is we get a certified agency to certify the quality of product like we used to say we go for siri we go for iso for the quality and so on so this iso siri kind of agency actually is to prove that our product will get a quality uh, will be of a certain good quality so that is important for the uh, certification next people how about the people who do in the management uh the marketing for example the management team the staff the corporate culture and the who are the people who do the customers how are they going to do the customer service and so on and last will be the process what are the process involved in this whole marketing process Okay, whether this process is more customer focused or your company focused are you do you have it support to support your business do you have the r d to help you to improve further your products to a new stage so this is the seven piece seven piece that we we look at when we are trying to plan for the marketing of a product so when we talk about product Okay, the first P in the marketing, the product actually is being designed by the marketers according to the needs of the consumer. So you can see that McDonald's, for example, when you look when you know look at this brand, you know oh this is a very famous brand. And then because you know that customer will prefer something different for breakfast, so, so they have bought out for breakfast, happy meals, okay. This is more like the uh, uh, for children. Also, they have the set, McCafe, they have the desserts, they have the food, and so on. They also have uh, organizing events such as parties and meetings. So these are the product or the service. So when we talk about product, it's not necessarily must be goods. It can be product and service, like uh, McD, they are selling uh, package events package of events such as a birthday party so this is like a service plus products so goods and service in a product so when we talk about branding i keep on saying branding is so important so brand branding is to create something unique and persistent perception in the mind of the consumers or in the mind of user so we are using First, brand name. So the brand name is so important. Second, the logo. When we look at the logo, we know what is this. Like, for example, the M. When we look at the M in color yellow, in yellow color, then we know oh, this is at McD. Okay? And then the slogan. Yeah, when I ask, uh, what is the slogan of AASIA? Then everybody can answer. Okay? The slogan of AASIA is everybody can try. So this is part of the branding. When I talk about color, one very interesting thing I can see is in the telecommunication companies, for example, DG, they have their unique color that is yellow. And other companies like Maxine, uh, Selcom, they also have their unique colors. Even a new, uh, relatively new provider like uh, U-Mobile, they also have the different color. So they are already uh, using a color as a way to express their product. So why are we using color? Because color sometimes represents something. For example, uh, green color normally represents life, peaceful, growth, and nature. Especially products that they are trying to promote something nature, they will prefer to use green color. For example, body shop, they will prefer to use green color. But product that they, they want to strengthen your belief, you, your trust towards the product then they are going to use blue like intel for example okay oral b for example they want to strengthen your belief that this product is good this product is something that you can trust and how about red color when we talk about red we think of color like uh, for kfc color for coca-cola and lego all these actually relate to 
playfulness, excitement, and so on. So they are using this color to relate to the product that they are promoting. Next, we are looking at price. When we look at price, you know that we have this pandering pricing as well as we have this uh, psychological pricing. When we call whole bundling pricing or another way we call it package, we have package with food and drinks, for example, that we usually see. Then uh, at the same time, when people are selling printer, for example, some of them, they also sell together a, a cartridge, cartridge together with the printer. So this is like bundle. And then they make it the price cheaper then you buy it like the a la carte way. And at the same time, we have this psychology pricing, like uh, $3.99, $4.99, actually 99 cents means one unit already, but still they give you $3.99. So you are more happy to pay for $3.99 rather than following it. So this is psychology. And we look at the price, like keep on saying where you're going to sell it, either in your own shop or in a kiosk, a drive through or online and uh, delivery. So this is also talking about the channel where, how are you going to make sure the product reach the customer, whether the customer come to your restaurant or you expect them to drive through your account, your, your shop to buy things, or you want to deliver it direct to them. Next will be the promotion. The fourth P will be the promotion. Promotion is so important. In terms of promotion, we also talk about advertisement and sales promotion. When we say advertisement, advertisement is one way. So we only inform the customer about this, this, this. We only use a various advertising advertisement to influence the customer. But when we talk about, look at the sales promotion, we are trying to give some discount benefits to the customer. For example, we give royalty card. After they use the product for 10 times, we we give them one extra something. Or uh, we give them discount for uh, first time customers. All these are sales promotion for the purpose giving discount so that they will start to buy or they will continue to buy our products. Next, I'm looking at the unit selling post proposition. Remember when we talk about unit selling proposition like in the last unit, we are talking about the unit point or the unique kind of characteristic of our product. So unit selling proposition, USP, actually is a factor that differentiates a product or service from the competitors. So you are actually trying to offer to your customers something that is unique and better than your competitors. It can be direct benefit, for example, material and contents for product, qualification, Okay, or certificate. So you prove that your product is better than product of other people or uh, user friendly, for example, easy to use. And then indirectly, you can help them to come up with uh, uh, new ways of using the product, easy way of using the product. Sometimes people sell software, they also provide free training. Okay, for example, free training for certain software. So this is a way to, to, to let your uh, to keep your customer happy because they might not know how to use the product. So you need to provide them with uh, in uh, training to help them to know, to get to use the product and give them warranty, provide them with additional service and other guarantee, for example, warranty. These are so important, especially if you are selling products. How about services? Services also, uh, you have a different unique selling proposition and slightly different from the products. For services, you might look at proficiency, the experts uh, who are providing that service, who are they? Okay, is it a specialist doctor or uh, just a common doctor? Okay, How, what are the testimonials of the customers? What are the quality assurance? That means that for services, sometimes you cannot see the quality of the product. So you need quality assurance to assure that this product is good, the service is good, affordability and convenient to, to, for you to use that service. So service is uh, slightly different, has slightly different use USP than the product.
Next, we are looking at KLT concept. So KLT stands for no like and trust concept. In simple no like and trust concept, you can see is uh, talking about how to attract the customer until how you reach and sell the customers. So the first step under KLT system is you are trying to attract the attention of the customers. So at this point of view, for the new companies uh, that you are starting, you just try to attract attention first. And everyone in your market segment are the suspect customer. Suspect means they might they might have probability buy your products, but you are not so sure whether they are really want to buy a product or not. Then after that, you start to make them like your product. For example, you you try to give them some uh, discount for new customer. You do some sales, and then uh, you you get some new customers to give you testimonial so up with that testimonial or product reviews other customers who never use the product will have more trust with your product they will be more confident than they might have interest then they start to think mm, this product is good mm, maybe i want to buy this product okay so this type of customer we call them prospect prospect customer that means that they have a high probability probability they want to buy your product but they still didn't come out with money yet they still haven't buy your product yet so next will be trust trust is talking about how customers going to trust your product and then they will start to buy your product and you hope that they will continue to buy your product as much as possible so klt is talking about how to attract the customers how to make the customer like your product and lastly how to make them trust your product so for a new company this is quite suitable